Alrighty. Hey, everybody. Rory Fry here with Reformed and Recovered. Waiting for confirmation that we are live. Yep, there's the confirmation. We're going to jump into this sixth part in this short series of short videos. Uh, going through the different petitions and portions of the Lord's Prayer. In this video, we're going to be looking at the phrase, give us today our daily bread, or give us this day our daily bread, depending on the translation that you're looking at. Um, but this is going to be the fourth petition in the overall, the overall prayer. And I've been pointing out in the previous videos that the Lord's Prayer is made up of six petitions. Um, the first three really kind of really dealing with God, the glory of God. We're praying that God's name would be hallowed. It would be reverenced. It would be respected. And we're praying for the kingdom to expand, right? For, for the kingdom of God to be realized in history and to be realized in our lives. And that God would bring many souls into, into the kingdom, bring many souls into salvation. And that the Lord's will will be done. And not that the Lord's will depends on our prayers, but that the Lord is, you know, delights to use those that delight in him, right? So the Lord, we pray that the Lord would cause his will to be done in our lives and in the world around us and that we would be conformed and shaped and, and you know, better fit, better, you know, better fitted to, uh, to carry out God's will on earth. So we've kind of been looking at the petitions that, that really kind of deal with, deal with God. Now we're looking at these last three petitions, petitions four through six, when now we kind of start to pray for our, we pray for our needs, we pray for ourselves. So let me read the whole prayer to you guys, and then we're going to jump into this uh, petition four. And this is from Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And I'm out of the NIV. I think last video I read it out of the New Living Translation but I'm back in the NIV. So this then is how you should pray, right? So this is our opening prayer. This then is how you should pray. And the Lord Jesus Christ has given us this prayer to guide us and teach us and direct us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, or deliver us from evil, depending on the translation. And then again, the translation that you have often kind of closes with the, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But it's not included in all the Bible translations because it's not believed to be original to the prayer. It's most likely comes from a portion of first, I think it's first or second chronicles. They believe that maybe a scribe or somebody had kind of inserted it there as a, a nice ending to the prayer, but because it's not original to what Christ had said, it's not in those original manuscripts. Um, a lot of the translations will not include it or like in the NIV, they'll include it in a footnote. So they'll say, deliver us from evil. And some late manuscripts say, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So it doesn't show up in the earlier copies of the Bible. It shows up in later copies. So it's probably Bible verse inserted here. So it's still divinely inspired, but it's not divinely inspired where it was. It was kind of shifted and moved and moved around. But yeah, so now we're looking at this fourth petition give us today our daily bread give us this day our daily bread so i think without further ado we'll just jump into martin luther's small catechism so each petition i've been looking at martin luther's small catechism and a catechism is in question and answer he asks the questions and then he gives the answer to the question it's a style of teaching children this was actually originally written for children right <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't get me started on that. It's just crazy the, uh, you know, the wisdom that they used to bestow on children in the church. And these days, you know, we, we do veggie tales. But anyways, don't get me started on that. But so this is the fourth petition. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day 
our daily bread or give us today our daily bread. So Luther asked, what does this mean? What does it mean, give us today our daily bread? And now he answers. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers. And I'm going to stop there because Luther really is kind of playing on this theme right here. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers. So God doesn't only provide to people based on our prayers. God provides for everyone because he's by nature loving, caring, and giving. He's by nature a provider. So therefore he provides without us praying for it. But it's really kind of this prayer or this, this kind of theme that Luther picks up at the beginning of these different um, uh, at the beginning of these different petitions. So he gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers. God doesn't need our prayers to provide. Again, I think he delights in our delight in him, and he's good. So he gives us what we need, and he's a good father. He gives us you know he gives us what we want. Let's not shy away from saying that God does give us not just our our want our needs. He provides for our wants. There's nothing wrong with saying that. But basically, Luther is saying God doesn't need our prayer to do that. Just as God doesn't need our prayers for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He also says just as he doesn't need our prayers for the expansion and the extension of his kingdom, God's going to do that regardless. But we're praying that these things will be done in us. We're praying that we'd have a greater appreciation, a greater understanding kind of what's going on inside of us and the world around us. So God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. Okay, even to all evil people. So this is basically saying that God gives good things to everyone, not just Christians. Or not just, let me say it another way, or not just those that are rightly related to God through faith, right? God doesn't, he's not partial in that sense. Uh, if we look later on in the Sermon on the Mount, and I think this is probably what Luther's playing off of right here. It says, or I, earlier, sorry, earlier in the Sermon on the Mount. So this is from chapter, you know, the, the previous chapter. You have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. Okay, now listen. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and send rain, sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Now that sounds an awful lot like what Luther is just saying here. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. So God is kind, not just to his church, not just to those that are related to him through faith, but God is kind to all people, even those that have rejected him and want nothing to do with him. God is still kind. He still provides for them. He is still a provider for them in spite of their rejection of him. Now, this is sometimes called common grace. I want to get into kind of theological terms. It's a really kind of a term that was popularized in Dutch Calvinism, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty of it. And it just, it differentiates between what's often known as special grace. So common grace is the grace that God displays to all people. And then there's a special grace that God uh, displays to his church and those that are related to him, rightly related to him through faith. So common grace is kind of this grace and mercy that goes out to all people, special grace is this grace, it's a saving grace that goes out to those that have embraced Christ through faith. Um, so I think that's kind of what Luther's getting at here. He's talking about common grace, that God provides, he gives daily bread to everyone, even those who reject him, because God is a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from, the, from, from God above. It comes from the Father. Like every good and perfect gift comes from God the Father. And that's the book of James, right? So that's another kind of expression of this common grace idea that everything good, everything good in this world comes from the goodness, the kindness of God. 
So God doesn't need, doesn't need our prayers. He never needs our prayers. God is never in need of anything that we can give. He's, he's self-supporting. He is self-contained. He does not need us. He does not need our... When we pray, we are not informing God. We're not, we're not giving God information that He lacks. God is lacking in nothing. Okay? But we pray this petition that God would lead us to realize, and this is what Luther's saying, this is why we're praying give us today our daily bread, that God would lead us, right, would lead us to realize this, that God would lead us to realize, to understand the provision of God, because I don't think we understand that quite as we ought to, but that God would lead us in this realization and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. So I think we're ultimately praying for gratitude. God, increase our gratitude for the many blessings in our lives. The fact that we are alive today is a blessing. The fact that we are, um, you know, in a somewhat sound mind, that is a blessing. Things could always, it could always be much worse. So when we pray for this daily bread, we're praying that God would that would lead us into the realization of his power, of his provision, and that we would grow in our gratitude and our thankfulness to God and his provision. It's really the way he breaks it down is really just such a great, great way to break it down, and that's why Luther is hands down always been my, uh, he's always been my favorite theologian. He just has such a way of explaining this stuff. So now he asks, now what is meant by daily bread? Now what's meant by daily bread? And this is, this is one of those prayer requests that it's like Luther just pulls so much more out of this than I probably ever could. He says daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, right? So we're praying now, not just for spiritual things necessarily, but God will provide and take care of us, take care of our physical bodies, take care of this physical world because our, our bodies are created by God. This physical world is created by God. It was a good creation. God had created it good. God had created it and declared this is Good. So we shouldn't shy away from praying for physical things or think we can only pray for spiritual things, but we ought to pray for physical things as well. Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food. Yeah, we all need food. Drink. We can go X amount of days without food, but we can go even less without water. We need clothing. We need shoes to not hurt our feet. Houses, we need shelter. Home, that's family. We pray for the land, animals, money, goods. A devout husband or wife, right? So God provides all these things. A good husband, a good wife, a good partner, a good partner to build a, you know, a, a, a godly household with, to raise children that love and honor and respect the Lord. A devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, right? That if we are in charge of other people, that they too would be faithful to God and they would be faithful workers, hard workers. That we would be faithful, hard workers, devout and faithful rulers, devout and faithful rulers. Again, kind of, again, it's this big, big, all-encompassing prayer request. Good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. So Luther thinks all that's wrapped up in this. I don't know about you guys, but had you ever had that thought? I had never had that thought until I had read that in Luther. Now I'd read that in Luther years ago because he, he gets into it quite a few different places here because uh, Luther is very big into this idea of of vocation, that we serve the Lord where we're at, like that there's not any area in life that we are not to serve the Lord in, and there's not any area of life that's any better than any other area of life. And it was kind of this idea that only the clergy or only priests really had these God-pleasing jobs, and the rest of us were just peasants, and we were kind of this lower class of people. And Luther did much to could break down that bear and said that no the farmer that's just as much of a godly vocation a godly job as being a priest we need farmers just as we need priests and just as we need pastors so he's 
He's definitely big on this idea of vocation. And he gets into this prayer and just how big and how encompassing it really is. And that God does provide all these things. That God does provide for rulers. He does provide for the weather. He does provide for everything that he mentioned in this prayer. So it's much bigger than just saying, God, give me a little bit to eat. Or, you know, God, give me a, give me a decent job. We're praying for all these things. We're praying for the land, the animals, devout workers, devout faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. So when we say, God, give us this day our daily bread, there's so much attached to that prayer request right there. So much attached to that. So take good faithful rulers, good government, right? We, we might not think about the civil government in terms of this prayer, but if we have evil rulers and we have wicked rulers, well, they're gonna interfere, or they're gonna attempt to interfere with our daily bread. If we have rulers that exploit the people, it's gonna be that much harder for us to have our daily bread. You guys think about Israel before the Exodus? They were having to build bricks. They would, you know, they were oppressed through, you know, and all that. But at one point, they were using straw to make the bricks, and it made it easier. And then the Egyptians said, you know what, no more straw. They were oppressing them that much more, saying no more straw. It's going to be ten times harder for you to build the bricks now. We don't want rulers like that. We want rulers that are going to, uh, and government, and government leaders that are going to make the, possession of our daily bread easier, make it easier on us to attain our daily bread in a manner that honors and glorifies God, right? Again, the fourth petition of this prayer, not isolated from the other petitions. We're ultimately praying, God, give me your daily bread. Help me grow in my appreciation of you, my gratitude of you, so I could better help carry out your will on earth, the building of your kingdom, and I might better glorify and praise your name. So we are praying, God, give me, nourish me, give me what I need that I could better serve you. There is definitely a spiritual dimension to this, and we could definitely, man does not live on bread alone, that's in the book of Matthew also, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God provides for us physically and spiritually. Again, that, that, that's, that's wrapped up in all this that God would provide for our spiritual and our physical needs to live a good life and to honor and glorify God with that good life. So it really, it is such a beautiful prayer. It's full of so many beautiful thoughts. And if we take the time to, to really think about this, I'm going to read this one more time. Just, just wrap your head around the enormity of this petition right here. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. So you can remember that. You can bring that to mind the next time you're praying the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> just pray, and you can bring to mind just exactly what this, what, give us today our daily bread. Three, or oh, that's six words. But just how big that six words really is, and just how significant that six, those six words really are. And just how significant and great of a provider that our God in heaven is is. He provides everything that we have has come to us from God. So let me give you one more. I mean, like I said, Luther kind of deals with this stuff quite a bit. And he had written another book for his barber. His barber had asked him, you know, hey, Luther, teach me how to pray. You're a man of prayer. Teach me how to pray. So he writes him this book, and it's sometimes called A Simple Way to Pray or A Simple Prayer or something like that. And in that prayer, in that book, he breaks down again the Lord's Prayer and teaches his barber how to pray the Lord's Prayer. So he gets to the fourth petition. 
petition, give us today our daily bread. And he says, well, we pray for peace and good government. Dear Lord God and Father, grant us your blessings also in this temporal and physical life. Graciously grant us blessed peace. Protect us against war and disorder. Grant to our dear emperor fortune and success against his enemies. Grant him wisdom and understanding to rule over his earthly kingdom in peace and prosperity. Grant to all rulers good counsel and the will to preserve their domains and their subjects in tranquility and justice. Amen. Again, because that's what interferes with the daily bread. An evil emperor, we don't have an emperor in America, but Luther had an emperor at that time. We, you know, we have a president, we have a senate, we have all that fun stuff. And we would pray, God, give us godly leaders. Give us a godly president. Give us a, give us a senate. Give us a government that honors you and makes it easier. And, you know, makes it, makes it easier for us to attain our daily bread. They don't put things in our way. They don't take our straw from us and make it that much harder for us to earn our wages. And he says, we're also praying for protection of home and family. O oh God, grant that all people in city and country be diligent and display charity and loyalty towards each other. Give us favorable weather and a good harvest. I, com <clears throat> I commend to you my house and property, wife and children. Grant that I may manage and guide them well, supporting and educating them as a Christian should. Defend us against the destroyer and all his wicked angels who would do us harm and mischief in this life. Amen. So it's really all encompassing. It's God, give us everything that we need. Give us what we want. Give us everything that we need in all spheres of life. As I mentioned, these different estates. Give me everything that I need, Father, to be a faithful husband, to govern my house well. Give me everything I need to self-govern according to your, to your word. Give me everything that I need to be a faithful servant, a faithful member of your church. And God, give me everything that I need to be a faithful, <clears throat> to be a, not, not a faithful member, but to faithfully serve under in the civil sphere, to faithfully live in that area or to live in that estate. We're praying that God would give us everything physically and spiritually that we would need for the advancement of his kingdom, for his will being done on earth, and for his name to be hallowed, his name to be glorified and honored. If that ain't a big, if that's not a big prayer request, I don't know what it is. I'm going a little long here, so I'm going to go ahead and shut up, and I will see you guys, uh, I'll see you guys somewhere down the line. Have a good one. I love you. Bye.